Hello everyone. First of all, we are group five and we have five members. The first one is me, Atitivan Walamalish, 630591. My name is Tim Siri Lim Song Wong. My student number is CT0345. My name is Atisha Enunikon. My student number is 630470. My name is Tidara Punsawat. Student number is 630528. My name is Kenika Tang Tuan Chai. My student number is 60985. And today, we're going to present about the evolution of human beings. We all know what evolution is and how it generally works, but how much do you know about how we evolved? The story of human evolution isn't one that's taught in much detail, yet it's one of the most important because it's of a story. It also offers valuable insight into how our bodies and minds were from it, and how we change to become the most intelligent and productive species on planet Earth. For, for early humans like Choosing a starting point to talk about human evolution is tricky. There are many steps in the evolutionary process we could choose to begin our journey. Single cell organisms and primates are not humans, so we are going to start with the first early humans, the first beings belonging to the Homo genus. The Homo genus emerges from the Australopithecus genus, which was largely based in Eastern and Southern Africa. The genus name references their distribution. Being Greek for Southern Earth, Earths are not humans, so that's why we are starting with the Homo genus in street. As for the first species in the Homo genus, this would be the Homo habilis or handyman in English, as it is common with the process of scientific discovery. We don't know if they were definitely the first, they are just the earliest that we have far evidence of. So, how did they live? The Homo habilis lived in the early Pleistocene, which was superior to about 3 to 1.65 million years ago. Their place in the Homo genus has been the best since they share many similarities with an Australopithecus genus species, specifically the Australopithecus africanus. The H. habilis differed from Australopithecus scenes in that they created and used other wild tools, primarily for butchering meat. They ate more meat than Australopithecus scenes, which play a wider role in human evolution. Thus, through making a dietary differences, solidified the S. habilis at the first of the homogeneous for much of the paleoanthropological community. There were 30 to of the African swana in groups numbering between 65 to 85, ensuring they had enough manpower to fend off predators like cocks and big cats. How long have humans existed? While homo translates to men and its genus members are often referred to as human. What we think of are specifically Homo sapiens. That's because we are the only extinct species of the genus. The others are all extinct. You have probably heard that name before because it's yours. It means wise men. As a clear reference to our status as the smartest of the primates, how long have H. sapiens existed? By all accounts, we seem to have emerged from at least 200,000 years ago. Through some other discoveries, sub tools could put it back to 300,000 years ago. When the journey to get here has been at tens of millions of years, and considering how much humanity had done in just at least 600 years, a few hundred thousand years isn't that long. The Plosions of Evolution now that we know about the early humans to the best of our abilities, we should take a break to check out the process of evolution. Then we can apply those processes to human beings to explain how they evolved from the Homo habilis to us, the Homo sapiens of the day. In the guide about evolution, it was only a matter of time until Charles Darwin showed up. While the general ideas surrounding the all encompassing process of evolution showed up earlier, like in the writings of philosopher Herbert Spencer. The current theory was mainstream with Charles Darwin's on the origin of species in 1859. 
the publication outlined the process by which evolution pushes certain species forward while leaving others in dust, natural selection. As the name suggests, this is the environment and other circumstances pushes species into making gradual change away many. The process is often taught in five steps, called VISTA. V is variance. I is intelligence. S is selection. T is time. A is adaptation. Let's explain what this means, since they are the secret to natural selection, and so the process that evolution used to develop life forms. These are the naturally occurring differences inherent to the species of our planet, if a relatively similar ones, and on a genetic level. Individual members of those species are different too. The level of variance in nature is as doubting and serve as the perfect hotbed for mutations in those beings. Inheritances were being reproduced producing genetic copy of themselves by tropical mixing DNA, inheriting features from both parents. This is commonly observable through different traits, like high eye color, and certain face shape features, like the nose. Through this repeating process of the inheritance, selection takes place. This is where certain inheritors of certain DNA profiles are better equipped to survive. Resources are limited. After all, suitable is a competition between animals to survive and ensure they reproduce. The more successful a species is a fighting feed, mating, and fighting back again, or avoiding predators, the better chance they have to survive. Seemingly trivial details can change how a being interacts with its environment. How did humans evolve? Those are the main distinctions that differentiated the homogeneous from the Australopithecus. Although he has been discovered evidence for Australopithecus using tools too, alongside the Homo habilis, there was also the Homo ludofensis that lived approximately 1.9 million years ago and the Homo erectus, which had a long span of life from 1.8 million years ago to as recent as 100,000 years ago, during which they ranged from Southern Africa to East Asia. As erectus is commonly synonymized with Aegister, they are the same species. They are also the most successful of the Homo genus to date since their last and longest. If a longer than Homo sapiens have exited right now. Homo habilis and Homo erectus. So, what were the meaningful differences between H. habilis and H. erectus? They are thought to have lived beside one another and we are unsure if erectus evolved from habilis or if they had a shared Australopithecine ancestor. The Elitists were the first early humans to leave Africa and control fire. Controlling fire is fairly important, as you no doubt know, but the ability to cook may have made our brains larger, giving us those wrinkles that increase the surface area of our brain. Homo antecestor and Homo hydenbertensis, starting around 1.2 million to 800 years ago, we initially discovered them in Spain and had a long theory that they were common ancestors of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. We were getting in such moment, however, the stem is also that of Homo hypertensis, which started 800 years ago. Traditional Homo fossil after 800 years ago marked a typical mark as H. hypertensis. The H. hypertensis can generally be described as mix of H. electus and H. sapiens in terms of their inherited trait. The brain side was crossed to our after continued to use fire timing of erectus and traditional species is what hidden emergencies who are thought to have food propagated through Europe and seem to be capable of conditioning hunting strategy with manufacturers, spear and other sharp implements. 
Their dietary requirement would have required a lot of carbohydrate, which Europe was great in terms of edible plant matter, and they may have engaged in art through engraving or the symbolic nature of specimen is disputed. There were also geographic options and subspecies like Homo rodensis and Homo forensis that were thought to be tried to hedge ancestor and hedge hidden emergencies. Neanderthals and Denisovan. Homo hydenbergensis is thought to have evolved into European Neanderthal around 200 years ago. You probably heard of Neanderthal before. They get a lot of media attention since they were crossed species to us, coexisting with early Homo sapiens. They were around as recent as 35 years ago and are theory to have been bred out of existence by us. The modern human, some people even have Neanderthal in DNA. As is to be expected, they engaged in a lot of behaviors that contributed to our success as modern humans. They made adhesive from tree bark, build structure, make coating, try the hairy hand as zippering, with basket, use herb, and discover the joy of smoke food. They were likely the first of Homo genus that could be described as an epic predators. A lot of the same can be said for the Denisovan too. Thought they are more of kill with lemon crow. Neanderthal interbed with the Denisovan, burying the lie between them. For our paleontologists, the Denisovan likely split from a common ancestor of the Neanderthal. 400 years ago, and evidence of them dried up 30 years ago. Why Neanderthal tried in Central Europe, the Denisovan migrated throughout Siberia and the rest of Asia. Europeans are more likely to have Neanderthal DNA while Denisovan DNA is present in Polynesian and the Aboriginal peoples of the other Pacific Island nations. Through interbreeding with but it is thought that H. sapiens acquired the gene necessary to bear hardy mountainous regions of Europe and the humid tropical environment of Southern and East Asia. Homo sapiens, we are also theorized to have come from the high emergencies, so we evolved alongside the Neanderthals and the Nisovan, carrying many of skills that the Neanderthal were also capable of. We migrated east and interbred with both of them. It's likely we also catched and outcompeted them at hunting and battle in some instance, and this said climate issue probably contributed to their decline while humanity weathered the storm. As we mentioned already, we migrated across the Bering Strait Rand bit. This made us officially the first of the Homo genus to cross from the old world to the new world. Settling most of growth from their society developed relatively independently of one another from the first kingdom in the Mesopotamia cradle of civilizations to early society of modern day China, Mexico, and Peru. That's what the human evolutionary journey seemed to end. For now, as the subjects made a move from paleontology to a study of ancient history in Treat, you know the story from there. Civilization developed further and further until we have interconnected technologically as one society of today and the ability to unearth our fascinating evolution story. To finish this section, here a recipe of a grid upon evolution part of mankind. Homo habits 2.4 million years ago to 1.6 million years ago. Homo erectus 1.8 million years ago to 100,000 years ago. Homo heterogeneous 800,000 years ago to 200,000 years ago. Neanderthals. 200,000 years ago to 35,000 years ago. Dennis Wen, 400,000 years ago to 40,000 years ago. Homo sapiens, 300,000 years ago to present.
Naturally, a bigger are generalized and based on currently available fossils. There is a lot of room for error when trying to determine the origins and extinction dates of species. Summary With that, we come to the end of our guide on human evolution. We have discussed how evolution takes place for everybody, how the earliest men live, how they evolved to become the smart being that we are today. Now that you know, we have evolved into many debates that are still working in the field of paleontology. You hopefully have a new file application for how compact nature can be. It took a million years of trial and error to create us, so there are no telling where humility will go in the next thousand years.